Yes. Caboose, you got some time. Uh, 13, was it 13 or 14 13 minutes. minutes exactly? Yeah. 13 minutes preview of the Mortal Kombat movie. So you got to give us the okay. goods. So, I mean, I will say uh, kind of a spoiler, uh, spoiler alert for anybody. If you don't want to know. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Okay. <laughs> minutes of the Mortal Kombat movie I'm going to talk about and sort of break down, provide my thoughts on. Um, and I got a chance to see it. Thanks to to Warner Media. Thanks to, to WB Pictures, all of them for allowing me the opportunity. Uh, crazy experience. And holy crap, the first 13 minutes, I tweeted this. I said the first 13 minutes, if that's anything to go off of, already the best video game movie we've ever seen. Like, wow. bar none. Sets the tone. What? If the rest of the movie is anything like the first 13 minutes, it'll be the best video game movie of all time. Like, easily. Like, easily. Um, because so That's a bold that's, statement. So that's, I guess I'll give you, that's my spoiler free. That's my spoiler free thoughts. <laughs> spoiler alert now, if you don't want to know about the beginning of the movie, I'm going to start talking about it and breaking it down a little bit. It's uh, It opens up, it's feudal Japan. We're at the, uh, at, like, Hanzo Asashi's, like, home. You know, he's protected by the Shirai Ryu, which I was correct about, not Shirai Ryu. Um, he's protected by, you know, his clan. And you kind of get the origin of Scorpion. Loot, like, we see Sub-Zero, the Lin Kuei kind of show up bit by bit scorpions away from his family for a second gathering some water and you know what happens yeah, Scor- yeah. sub zero yeah. uh, as played fantastically by joe taslam menacingly by joe taslam uh ends up taking out hanzo's uh, family and just like again even from an acting standpoint like hiroyuki sonata and joe taslam as scorpion and sub zero respectively do such a good job everything's spoken within their language you know that one thing as well i had a chance to uh to, to interview um producer todd garner director simon mccoy and they said one thing that was really important for them is that every actor was cast like appropriately for each role so here you mm-hmm. sonata his character speaks japanese joe taslam his character speaks chinese they both even acknowledge that they don't understand what each other is saying um it's so cool i love stuff like that and the fights Oh my goodness, the action is insane. But yeah, so we see Scorpion's family unfortunately get killed. Um, and Scorpion sets out to find Sub Zero. In the meantime, it takes out a bunch of Lin Kuei, like assassins or whatever, and just lays them out. He's using the spear, like spinning it around, sending it through people's heads. There's a lot of blood. Um, which it, it's almost like comically so, but it works for a Mortal Kombat movie more than it would like if you saw it in John Wick, you know, because right. Mortal Kombat as a video game has that. You know, you watch Mortal Kombat 11, someone gets punched in the face and they're like letting out liters of blood, <laughs> more blood than they probably would ever have in their body. But that's the point, like that's the fun of it. And they make sure they keep that element in the movie as well, which I think really works. Um, and then after, Scorpion does find Sub Zero. They have an amazing fight. Uh, it's it's so well choreographed, and that's something that I really loved as well. Is that the choreography and the uh, and the fights and everything is so well put together? Um, and there's a huge emphasis on that. I mean, you have an actor like Joe Taslam who comes from the Raid films. I feel like mm-hmm. you would be doing a disservice not to have some pretty sweet action scenes. And the fights they're well shot. Not a million cuts. Wide angles. You can see everything. You know what's going on. You know who's who. Um, and then it sort of ends in kind of the death of Scorpion, which we all kind of know what that leads to, or at least the death of Hanzo Asashi. Right. Um, and then he's taken to the nether realm and on his way to become Scorpion, essentially. Uh, and then Raiden shows up and it turns out that one member of Hanzo's family was still alive and it was their baby, a child who was locked away before the Lin Kuei showed up. And I'm assuming that that is that lineage lead to one is, Cole Young. Oh, right. I don't think the, oh. big, they, the the movie starts out in like the 1600s, like feudal Japan. So I think it's, it's yeah. Not necessarily oh, that I see. Cole Young. His descendant was his actually, descendant, like or a full, yeah, like a lineage okay. that lead to Cole Young, or his yeah right. ancestors is, is a birthmark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a birthmark. They show. Oh, by the way, there I is still that, there have is issues with that. Scorpion Hanzo Sashi has that dragon mark on his arm, 
So I wonder if it's something that the Lin Kuei do to their kids. Like, so everyone in the clan like the has that Maybe. birthmark that kind of evolved into uh, right. everyone has it, right. even when they're out of the womb. Uh, but I do love seeing Caboose's oh, yeah, excitement. Too. Like we, we always gush over movies all the time. And I know it's going to be good because of yeah. Caboose's excitement. And the fact that you said that they acknowledge that, you know, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they speak two yeah. different languages. They speak Chinese yep. and Japanese. As soon as you have like any sort of medium um, that acknowledges something so like yeah. deep yeah. like that, exactly, so minimal, it's kind of like, okay, spoiler, Snyder Cut, spoiler, this is very early on, opening scene. As soon as you heard Spider-Man, uh, sorry, Spider-Man, Batman speak Icelandic. Right. You knew you're like, sure, sure. of course he would, he's Batman. because that's Batman, <laughs> right? Exactly. So when when you you're set up, you know that that it's gonna gonna be good there. So when you hear that, like, okay, they're acknowledging Japan and Chinese, two different ancestry, they're gonna try to pay homage to like smaller things yeah. in the lore. Um, I could really appreciate that. I, I still have to be sold on the birthmark though. The, the birthmark is weird, <laughs> but even down to the point of like them not wanting to include Johnny Cage, the producer of the film said like, hey, listen, like we want to do this character right. They want to do Johnny Cage. And, and they said like, hey, if it becomes a franchise, like let's do it. You know, they want, obviously Johnny Cage is such an important character to Mortal Kombat and they want to introduce that. But at the same time, they also wanted to make sure that this film really dealt with representation in the right way. They even went so far as to say, like when they were casting actors for specific roles, they wanted to make sure their backgrounds matched that role. And it was to the point where they oh, did their awesome. research and they, when they were auditioning, they said, you guys better tell us the truth about your background because we're going to find out. Um, and I, and I honestly, like, mm. I appreciate that. They wanted to make sure they did. I respect this that. Right. Down to the T that and you know is Japanese. Sub Zero is Chinese, and Hiryu Hiri Sonata Japanese, Joe Taslim Chinese. Like I love that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And I love that you said they acknowledge the fact Johnny Cage yeah. is such a huge character in the franchise, that a beloved character, um, and that they still yeah. have hopes for him. So hopefully, after you know this Mortal Kombat movie, yeah. and it may have made sense, right? Like if they don't want this to be too comedic. Right, they want it to be more focused on the combat, uh, you know, the lore between Scorpion and Sub Zero. It may make sense why they don't fit Johnny Cage into yeah. that equation. I'm just happy that it's not. Um, sorry, what's his name? Um, the new guy. Cole like Young. he doesn't turn out yeah. to be a Johnny. Yeah, Cole Young. He doesn't turn out to be sure. a Johnny Cage figure. Um, just because you know that kind of makes sense. Like you wouldn't have a Deadpool movie before the X Men. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like. And, it, and it wouldn't well, make like sense. You mentioned that uh, but, you know, kind of fits the bill of a character that provides a lot of comedy and a little levity to the film. So they didn't want to have two characters that mm -hmm. were doing that. Um, and just like because Johnny is such a big character, but they wanted to make sure they put focus on characters like Scorpion or Sub Zero in this film. They didn't want it to just be like some some like let's call a spade a spade. Like they didn't want some white dude to essentially be eating up and stealing the screen time right. from where this film like should be about the representation and should be like a good showcase of that. So, I, I mean, I'm looking forward. I want this to be a franchise thing because there's so much potential here. And just based on the first 13 minutes alone, I am all in. I'm fully like, have no worries at this point now. Very excited for this movie. I hope it lives up to my expectations. Well, I'm so happy that you're saying, you know, positive things about these small character moments and the, the choreography as, as well. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm curious about was like, what do those other shots look like like in terms of cinematography like the establishing shots and stuff like that does it does it align uh, with everything else that's going on uh, yeah, is it as well shot it's nothing that's like blowing my mind but okay. um but as well another mm -hmm. thing that i loved when uh when i was speaking to the director was that they used like as little green screen as possible everything looks okay. real everything, oh that's awesome it looks like a built set like it looks like you know you're you're in feudal japan from the jump of the movie um, it's nothing like I'm not necessarily seeing like Roger Deakins shooting the Mortal Kombat movie or something. It's sure. not like the greatest sure. cinematography I've ever seen in my life. But when it comes to the action, everything is shot really well. Everything is in frame. Um, and just, yeah, those establishing shots and all that. I, I feel the setting. I, I feel immersed in it. I'm not like taken out of it in any way. That's awesome. Yeah. 
How about the um, CG? Because, you know, um, we I've been a wa- watching a lot of WandaVision, a lot yeah. of Winter Soldier. They, for the most part, hold up. However, there's like a few big scenes in there where yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's the CG. Um, how is how is that with so Mortal Kombat? So there's a lot Kombat? of CG blood, which, again, I, I think plays yes. into what they're trying to do and emulate from the games in that there's just a ridiculous amount of blood. <laughs> but um, outside <laughs> of that, you know, like a character like Raiden pops up. Uh, his, the CG was really cool. The way he like appears, you know, with the lightning and everything was super sweet. Um, and then besides that, there wasn't too much CGI from the first 13 minutes that I saw, okay. which honestly was a good thing. It was just a raw fight between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Well, that's what I prefer, um, right? Like, you know, you look back at the Mortal original Mortal Kombat yeah. movie, Reptile. The, 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 yeah. that, that doesn't yeah. that doesn't hold that didn't hold up back then <laughs> it still doesn't hold up so i'm hoping like you know i'm very hopeful that you know there's not too much cg just because then with smaller budgets you really um right. notice that and it sometimes takes you out of it but uh, malik what were you what are your thoughts hearing what my, has my big thing the thing that i i instantly thought to when you were talking about uh kind of like maintaining that like comical almost level of blood is in the mandalorian how it's such a high level production, but they still have the wipes. They still have, you know, the cheesy trains. Yeah. <laughs> There's still yeah. a lot of those little elements where you're like, I'm still in the Star Wars universe. I'm yeah. excited because they're bringing more, they're updating Mortal Kombat, but they're like, yo, you are still in the Mortal Kombat universe. Like yeah. there are still some outrageous things. And I'm just excited to watch it now because obviously seeing your reaction, seeing, you know, how much praise you're giving it, I think it's going to be good. I can't wait. Uh, I think it'll live up to the hype. I know that the Cole Young thing is the one like big if for a lot of people. Um, and and mm-hmm. maybe it'll still be that by the end of the film. But if they get everything else yeah. right, which so far, just in the first 13 minutes, looks like they are, then I'm good. Like, that's all I need. Good. It's a good yeah. time. It's a good time. Like a- <laughs> all right. So we learned that uh, Mortal Kombat, the movie, may be the best video game movie Maybe. of all time. Um, Caboose, why don't we play some bets on that off stream and then we'll see if it pays out when okay. the movie's yeah. actually out. <laughs> yeah. All right. OK, let's do that. Uh, but for now, I uh, just want to remind all of you uh, that you could check out all of our content at squadstate.com. Steve and Malik both write for the website. So Steve, starting with you, can you tell us what you Absolutely. have coming up to yeah, the website? So I've got a little bit of uh, Marvel's, con- uh, Marvel's Avengers content coming out, specifically around Hawkeye. Really excited to be playing as him. Um, and then. Outriders, I'm I'm still you know a little tepid on the game, so I'm curious to see how much content I can I can you know drag out of that game, but we'll see. Uh, you know it comes out in uh, by the end of the month, so yeah, looking forward uh, to checking out the game and hopefully get some stuff out for Squad State. And you, Malik? Uh, I am working on a really big piece right now. Um, it's about showcasing culture, not color. Um, and just kind of about representation in video oh, nice. games, uh, and kind of digging into that. There's a lot, you know, that goes into that. So yeah. uh, it's been kind of an endeavor. Uh, but other than that, uh, in about an hour and a half, I'll be going live on my Twitch live W Malik, uh, and we're going to be talking about all of the Valorant news from this past weekend. So that's going to be fun. Very good. Awesome. And Caboose, I know you were busy, busy, busy. Uh, so what yeah, can we expect more, from you? Uh, on some more Marvel's YouTube? Avengers content. Going to be covering some stuff around Hawkeye. Uh, so you can expect to see some of that. I know that there's still a little more coming out of the Mortal Kombat movie with just under a month to go until the actual release. So I'll be covering a little more of that. Uh, and then I'm streaming. You know, you can check me out YouTube.com slash Caboose, Twitch.tv slash Caboose. Or if you want to keep up to date with everything going on in my life, you can check out my social medias, Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. Nice. I'm going to have to check your uh, Twitter because it turns out Green Skull may want in on this uh, bet saying House of the Dead okay. is the all time best video game movie of all time. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. Uh, for myself, I have a preview of Phoenix Rising oh, coming boy. up. Um, uh, so. <laughs> Is he saying Far Cry? <laughs> what? Okay, anyways. Um, so just stay tuned to my socials. This is Camco. I have a lot of uh, stuff coming up uh, as well. And of course, for all your latest Squad State um, on Twitter, squadstate.com for the website and all that goodness. We'll be back next time. For now, we'll see you later. Bye.